Welcome back to the vlog. I feel like every time I've filmed something since I came back to YouTube, the background has looked different. And that is because my fiance and I have just been moving things around as furniture is being delivered. So you can see the Chase Lounge in the back. We love it, it's wonderful. And we still have not set up his desk as I'm filming this, but maybe that'll be some B-roll that'll make it into this week's vlog. We'll find out. So what are we doing in today's vlog? I am super, super excited because we are going to be storyboarding because when this goes live, it's the week of the 19th, the 20th of September, which means Preptober is truly upon us. And I feel like I'm in a really good place with the manuscript that I want to work on for NaNoWriMo and the Write 50K in 30 Days Accountability Program, everything that I'm doing for that. I feel like I'm in a really good place with that manuscript as well as what I am wanting to write. So I'm going to be a rebel Nanoer, I think that's, I think you can be a traditional Rymo or like a rebel Rymo <laughs> underneath the NaNoWriMo umbrella. So as a rebel, it means you are not starting a brand new book from scratch come November 1st. It means that you are working on a previous manuscript or just one of your other works in progress. So I think what I will be doing for NaNoWriMo this year is working on two book projects because I need to write the end, which is actually really exciting because I always sort of slump in the middle. It's like the dreaded middle of November, middle of NaNoWriMo, where you're writing kind of like the middle of your book. And it's just that dreaded middle slump. Let's say middle one more time. <laughs> I'm gonna be writing two different books in November, which I think is something I did a while ago. I've been doing NaNoWriMo since 2015, 2016. I've been doing it for a long, long time, maybe even 2014. I don't know. I have to go look at all of my projects on the website, which by the way, add me as a buddy. My handle is author Kristen Martin. I'll leave that linked in the description box below, but I would love to have you as a buddy during NaNoWriMo. But yes, my plan is to work on two book projects and I've never done this before where I'm writing the end of two different projects. So this is something new for me. I want to say it's going to be a challenge, which maybe it will be going from one story and then shifting over halfway through the month of November to a completely different story and wrapping my head around all of that. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of prep work and just making sure my outlines are updated so that I know what I'm going to be writing next. But to write the endings of two different books feels very exciting to me. So I just go with what feels good and what lights me up and what my intuition is telling me to do. So for the second half of November, I believe I'm going to work on the fifth book in the Shadow Crown series, which I'm realizing now that since I released Crescent Fire, at the end of that book, there's a little sneak peek for the chapter one of the next book. So I'm realizing that I can actually say the name, say the title of that fifth book, which is Arcane Haven. So that is what I will be working on for the second half of November. And then for the first half of November, that book project is one that I've kind of mentioned because it's definitely metaphysically based, like metaphysical fiction, but it's, it's darker and it's, uh, like witchier and it's been so much fun to write, but I need to finish writing the end of that book as well. That that book is turning into a, a beast of a book and I have not announced the title of that one. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that one locked down for now, but that's going to be my first project, writing the end of that first book at the beginning of November. And then at the end of November, I'm going to work on the end of the fifth book in the Shadow Crown series, which is titled Arcane Haven. And then I already know what one of my NaNoWriMo rewards and Preptober rewards is going to be, which is getting the first draft of the book cover for Arcane Haven. So that's going to be in the works too, and I'll be able to share that 
pretty soon, I hope. Definitely sometime this year. Okay, so let's talk about storyboarding because that's what we're doing in today's vlog. And I feel like I've had different storyboarding videos over the past couple of years. So I know I did one that was character or POV based. So I'll link that one up in the cards for you in case you just want to see how that one is laid out. And then I am pretty sure that the one that I did last year was more of an act one, act two, act three storyboard. So I'll also link that one up in the cards. I can't remember if I did that one as POV based. I don't think that I did. I don't think that I did, but I can't remember, but I'll still link it up in the cards in case you want to watch it for the first time or rewatch it. And so this year, because I'm kind of splitting this up into two projects for NaNoWriMo, I'm going to have two different storyboards just for act three for each book that I'm going to work on. So a little bit different in terms of the storyboarding, but you know me, I like to keep it new. I like to keep it fresh. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do in today's vlog. And like in my previous videos, I can't really zoom in on what I'm writing or I pretty much turn all of my index cards, my post-it notes over so you can't actually see what's being written on there, especially because this is going to be the end of those books. So as you're watching this, if you're like, but the index cards and post-it notes are blank, that would be why, but I'll do my best to kind of explain the color coordinating and how I'm doing that specifically for act three. All right, so without further ado, let's get to storyboarding. about what I just did for this storyboard. I decided I'm not going to film the one for the second book project, which is Arcane Haven in the Shadow Crown series, because the categories, like the color categories are going to be the same regardless. So I think I'm gonna try to do like a split screen situation so that way you can see the board as I'm talking about it. Or maybe I'll just put it up on the screen because I don't know if there's gonna be enough room to do a split screen situation. But anyways, the way that I color coordinated things, and again, this is for act three, so there's a lot of like closure and wrapping up and tying up certain things. So the categories may look different like your color categories if you're doing act one and act two storyboarding. But for act three, I decided to make my orange cards events. And that's because there are very specific events that are happening kind of near the end of act two, because that's already written into act three that I need to finish writing. And they also wrap up the foreshadowing that was happening <laughs> in the earlier part of the book. This is so hard to explain without telling you like what the things actually are. But anyways, the orange card stands for events. The yellow cards I decided to do as foreshadowing revealed because obviously this is a standalone book, this project that I'm working on. So I need to make sure that whatever I have foreshadowed in acts one and two are like that foreshadowing has been revealed. It's been, there's closure around it. It's been tied up by the time we hit act three. And then the pink cards, that is subplot closure. So kind of the same thing as foreshadowing, but there are some like little things that I wouldn't call them subplots, like just little things in foreshadowing that I want to make sure I take care of in act three. So I wanted to have a separate category for subplots. So of course, if you're introducing a subplot in a standalone novel, you want to make sure that you 
tie that up by the end of the book. Like don't leave your readers hanging, right? If you're writing a series, that's different, but standalone novels, you need to make sure you tie everything up in a nice little bow. So then I have my green card, which is the resolution. And this is for the main plot. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been writing books for seven years. So I'm not the kind of person to just dump the, the resolution in the final chapter and have that be it. I kind of sprinkle the resolution throughout. You still have that wow moment where you're like, oh, because I like to have, you know, plot twists and things like that. So kind of that, that reconciliation moment, if you will, there is always that moment, but it's not like all this stuff is just happening all at once because I actually made that mistake in my very first novel, my debut novel, The Alpha Drive, where a lot of the feedback that I received, even from the Kirkus reviews, was that the end just seemed really fast. Like there was just a lot of stuff happening. And so I was like, I need to make sure I space things out a bit better and that I am spreading out the kind of like wow moments, the it factor moments, the reconciliation moments, the, the resolution, just kind of throughout act three. So that's why I have this green card here to make sure that I'm spacing it out as needed. And you'll see on my storyboard, there actually isn't too much green yet because this is usually the last thing that I'm doing. And this tends to occur as I'm writing it. So I don't have as much green on my storyboard yet, but that's something that's going to be added in a bit later. So you can see I have the trials laid out and then I have something called the act three climax because I feel like I know a lot of people will say, oh, you should only have like one major climax in your book. It's kind of like you have one major plot in your book, but you can also have subplots. And I feel like you can also have multiple climaxes throughout your acts, right? So I feel like you can have a climax in act one, especially one in act two, because if you don't have something that's happening in act two, I feel like it can just drone on and on and on and the story drags on and there's nothing really happening and you're like, is this just filler? Is this just fluff? So I have to make sure there's at least something happening in act two, right? So with the orange cards, I have the trials that are happening and then I, I won't turn this around, but on the back of it, I wrote what this particular trial is. So when I'm doing the storyboard, when it's not for a YouTube video, I would just write everything on the front so that way I can look at the storyboard and it's all just right there, right? But for right now, you're just, it looks very sparse <laughs> because I wrote everything on the back of the cards, like what this trial actually entails, what it's all about, how it's affecting my characters, who it's affecting, and how that's going to change or impact the trajectory of the story going forward. And when I say that, that just means the rest of Act 3, basically. But then you'll see under Trial 1 and 2, so once you get your storyboard lined out, you can actually draw branches if that helps you see how everything connects. But under Trial 1 and Trial 2, when Trial 1 and 2 happen, there's some foreshadowing that's going to be closed out or taken care of. So I'm revealing some foreshadowing, which is why I have a yellow card underneath those two orange cards. And then there's also a subplot that is going to be closed out as well. And you'll see I also put like PG page number because that helps me reference the page number in my manuscript. What foreshadowing I need in case I need to just refresh myself as to what the foreshadowing was in the beginning of the book or exactly what the subplot was. So there may be multiple page numbers depending on how how many times you reference that foreshadowing item or that subplot. Again, I hope this is making sense. It's so hard to, to talk about it without actually referencing something from, like something specific from my book. And then moving on to trial three, which is the third orange card. So underneath that, I have some foreshadowing that's going to be closed out. And then the next orange card is trial four. And so there's a subplot that's going to be closed out before a foreshadowing is revealed like the foreshadowing from earlier in the book. So that's why that's lined up in that order. And then you'll see the final, the fifth orange card is the act three climax, like I talked about earlier. And there's some foreshadowing that's going to be revealed, a subplot that's going to be closed out. And then at the bottom, I have my green card for the final chapter, like what information is being revealed with regard to the resolution of like the entire plot, the entire story in that final chapter. And like I said, I'm going to add more green cards into this. It's just as I was starting to do it, I realized I don't know exactly where I want to put them yet. So we're just going, we're gonna wait on that. 
But that is how I do my act three storyboarding. And again, this same process is going to be used for the second book project that I'll be working on come November. All right, my love, so that is going to conclude today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and click that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe button. I wanna thank you so much for coming along with me today and storyboarding with me. I really hope that you just enjoyed seeing how all of that is put together. Don't forget that we kick off the Write 50K in 30 Days accountability program in just two weeks with our very first live stream on Tuesday, October 4th. When you sign up, you get access to the members page as well as the calendar for that two month accountability program for the month of October and the month of November. All of the live streams and the dates and the, the workbook and everything is on there. So I'll leave that link in the description box below for you. I would love to have you. Make sure you join our Facebook, our exclusive Facebook group, so that way you can stay up to date with everything. And you'll also be getting a lot of emails from me if you are a part of the Write 50K program just throughout the months of October and November to cheer you on and keep you updated and get all the information about the prize boxes and the prize box challenges and how all of that is working. I am so excited and I can't wait to get started on that. As always, I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.